In this training video, we are going to look at the ripping function found in Song Surgeon version 4. The ripping function is identical to what it has been previously, meaning version 3. So if you are already familiar with version 3, this is going to be old news, so to speak. But if you are new, as I know many of you are, uh, we need to review this. So let's go ahead and take a look at the rip function and how it works. When we click this button it opens a dialog window and from that dialog window we'll work from top to bottom and discuss what's going on here. Firstly up at the top we have a little drop down menu here because some computers have more than one CD or DVD bay on it and this will allow you to select whichever drive is the correct drive. In our case here this is drive E. Now one other thing I just remembered that I want to point out to you is that I would suggest that you put your CD in your computer first and let it load in that drive before you open this window. If you open this window first and everything is blank and then you put your CD in, it's possible that Song Surgeon will not detect the CD, but if you put the CD in first, then you should not have that problem. So sorry for that one sort of sidebar, but I wanted to explain that to you. So the next thing we have here then is a list of the tracks. And you can see one through 10, and you can see that we have names for each of the tracks. And that's achieved by using this lookup feature down here. Uh, if I deselect it, it simply by default goes to track one, track two, track three, etc. What you need to understand is that if you're working with commercially produced CDs, you can probably use this lookup feature in 98% plus of the cases. It'll find these tracks for you, and that'll be convenient. But on some CDs that are commercial, it may not find them, and certainly on homemade ones, it will not find tracks. And so in that case, if you have use lookup selected and it can't find anything, this area here will be actually blank and you'll think that well Song Surgeon is not displaying any of the tracks but the reason for that is because this use lookup is selected so if you're not seeing any tracks populate this window my first suggestion is to deselect this and then you should see tracks like this so that's one thing to keep in mind one other thing that I like to point out is this naming convention here. By default, we use the word track, and therefore it shows track 1, track 2, track 3, etc. But you can type in here anything you want. It can be, you know, Ann or David or, or, or you know, album name. Not a very good typist here, but it'll use that as default and then it'll append 010203. So that allows you to give names or give a name to these. And obviously, if you're ripping multiple CDs and they all are track one, track two, track three, you're going to run into conflicts or overriding all those files. So this allows you to basically change this default name, and that's pretty useful. The next thing is we move down, and I'm going to grab this dialog window and move it up so we can see the whole thing here. But as we move down, we have a save as type, so we can save it as a WAV, which is really the default file type found on a CD. It's an excellent quality file. It's lossless, meaning it doesn't do any compression, but it is very large and it's not very practical for iPods and phones and things of that nature. So you can choose a number of file formats, MP3s, AACs, WMAs, um, you know, some other things here. Um, you know, MP3s are probably the most common. Uh, Cross-platform, if you're on a Mac, then the things that are more common are M4As or MP4s or AACs. But you can choose any one of these output formats. And then once you've done that, you can also choose the destination location or where these files are to be saved to. And um, there will be a default destination in here. Uh, and then you can override that by simply clicking this button. It'll open a different Windows dialog that you can browse to the location that you like to save them. And then lastly, at the bottom, two little checkboxes. The first is that if you check override existing files, if you have 
you know, track one, for instance, if we use the default track here as we were before, um, and you've already ripped a CD and you've got a track one stored on your computer and you select this, it will automatically overwrite those existing files when you rip this CD. So you probably do not want to check this unless you know indeed that you do want to overwrite these files that are already on your computer. The other thing here is this little checkbox. It is also controlled through the options menu over here, but this essentially works well if you don't have the ability to locate tracks using this lookup service and you just simply have track one or track five. You really have no idea perhaps what that is, but if this is checked, you can simply select and it will actually, as you can hear, start playing the song. So this gives you a preview of the song. So if you're trying to figure out which track it is that you know you'd like to select, you can use that to help you find it. Last thing, and then we are done here, you can select one track. Um, you can hold the shift key and select multiple tracks. You can hold the control key and select, you know, any random number of tracks here. So those are all options that you have. And that really concludes this video tutorial on the ripping function in Song Surgeon version 4.